is part 50 of WCF video series. In this video, we'll discuss authentication in WCF. In part 47 of this video series, we discussed how bindings provide confidentiality and integrity security features out of the box without any additional configuration. In this video, we'll discuss authentication and in a later video, we'll discuss authorization. Out of the box, most bindings provide authentication without any additional configuration. For example, out of the box, both WSHTTP binding and NetTCP binding provides Windows authentication. Let's understand this with an example. Let's flip to Visual Studio. Let's create a new project. And let's call this project simple service. Let's delete this class 1.cs file that's auto-generated. And to this project, let's add a new item. And we want to add a WCF service. So let's search for the template, select WCF service, and let's name our WCF service simple service. And let's change the name of this operation contract. Let's call it get username. So what is this operation contract going to do? It's going to return the logged in username. And since we want to return the logged in username, the return type of the operation contract is going to be string. Now let's go ahead and implement this operation contract in a simple service file. So click on I simple service, press control dot and you'll get an option to implement um, the interface method. In this case, get username. So here we need to write code to return the logged in username. So how are we going to get the logged in username? So obviously, WSHTTP binding and NetTCP binding out of the box provide Windows authentication, meaning whoever is logged into the computer, you know, we are going to return that logged in username. So how are we going to get the logged in username? To get that, we use service security context class. So service security context dot current dot primary identity and if you look at this object it has got three different properties is authenticated you know this is a boolean property okay so this is going to return true if the user is authenticated so let's actually print that as well so console dot right line so within the console window of our WCF service will print uh, you know a message saying whether the user is authenticated or not so is authenticated and to that, we are going to concatenate whatever you know this method is going to return is authenticated, and let's convert that to a string. Okay. Similarly, if the user is authenticated, then we also want to know what is the authentication type used. So, authentication type, and how do we get? to know what authentication type is used. Again, this primary identity object has got authentication type property, and that returns string. So there's no need to convert that again to a string. And then finally, so we know whether the user is authenticated or not, what authentication type is used. And finally, we want to know the username, that is the authenticated username. So console.writeLine. username and to get the username again we use the same object service security context dot current dot primary identity dot name should give us the logged in username okay so basically all these lines are going to print you know the message within the console window but this method needs to return the logged in username so let's go ahead and return that string so return um, let's sim just say authenticated username and we can simply copy and paste this same code right here okay so basically this line is going to return the authenticated username and these three lines are going to print whether the user is authenticated if the user is authenticated what or what authentication type is used and the username of the authenticated user okay all right so there we have our WCF service now we need to host this WCF service and to do that let's go ahead and add a console project to this solution and let's call it host project 
okay and to this project we need to add a reference to our simple service and we also need to add a reference to system.service model assembly so let's go ahead and do that as well and we need to add an application configuration file to our host project and here we need to specify the configuration to host the WCF service to speed things up I already have the configuration typed so if you look at the endpoint here notice that at the moment we are using WS HTTP binding and if you recollect um, you know WS HTTP binding provides Windows authentication out of the box okay and then within program.cs file we need to write code to start our WCF service so first of all let's bring in system.service model namespace and copy and paste the code to start the service host alright so let's set our host project as the startup project and run our WCF service so host started now let's create a client for our WCF service so here I already have a new Windows Forms application all I have done so far is dragged and dropped this uh, button control onto the form and then I have changed the name of the button to btn call service and the text on the button to call service so the first thing that we need to do here is to add a reference to our WCF service so add a service reference and if you look at the base address where our WCF service is available this is the base address so let's copy that go back to our client project and paste the address here click go so this should discover our simple service let's specify the namespace as simple service click OK and let's double click the button control which should generate the click event handler so now let's go ahead and invoke our simple service so first let's create a client and we have get username function which is going to return a string and let's display that string within a message box so message box dot show alright so let's go ahead and run this now now at the moment I am logged in into this computer using tan username so when I click call service so the name of the computer here is Venkat hyphen PC so that's what is the message we should get look at this authenticated username Venkat hyphen PC that's the name of my computer and on in this computer we have a user called tan and that's what I have used to log into this computer so um, you know it it has identified that okay now if you look at the service host console window look at that is authenticated true and auth authentication type is NTLM and username is Venkat hyphen PC backslash tan now I have another user you know on this computer configured uh, and the username is Venkat so let's actually run this uh, client application you know with a different user account and to do that open this client project in Windows Explorer navigate to the bin directory and then to the debug directory so here we have client.exe now you know hold down the shift key and then right click on client.exe so you will get an option to run that application as a different user so select that option so now it is asking you the credential of the different user um, you know wh using whose account you want to run this client application now we want to run this using a Venkat account that's configured on this Venkat PC so let's go ahead and type Venkat username and we uh, also need to type his password so let's go ahead and do that and then click OK so now this application is running using Venkat user account okay so when I click call service look at that Venkat hyphen PC backslash Venkat and if you look at the console window again look at that is authenticated true authentication type is NTLM and username is Venkat hyphen PC Venkat okay so out of the box you know WS HTTP binding is providing um, you know 
Windows authentication. Let's actually change the binding to NetTCP binding and see if it works the same way. So instead of uh, WSHTTP binding, let's change that to NetTCP binding. Let's close the client as well as the WCF service host and let's go ahead and run our WCF service host. Since we have specified the binding as NetTCP binding, we need to add a base address for TCP binding. So let's go ahead and do that as well. net.tcp colon four slash four slash localhost colon 8090. So that is going to be the base address for the TCP protocol. All right, let's go ahead and run our WCF service. So host started. Now let's go ahead and update our service reference within the client application. So if you look at the app.config file, at the moment it's using WSHTTP binding. Okay, so let's update the service reference. So now it is using NetTCP binding. All right, let's go ahead and run this. Click call service. Look at that. Venkat hyphen PC backslash tan and within the service host window is authenticated true NTLM and tan is the logged in user. So to customize the security mode for a binding, you know, we use mode attribute of security element within the respective binding. We discussed this in part 47. And now if we want to configure or customize the authentication mode for a given binding, then we use client credential type attribute of either the message element or transport element. Now let's say for example, you know, at the moment here we are using NetTCP binding. And then, you know, we know that we have different modes of security. We can either use transport security or message security or mixed mode security. So to configure the security mode, we usually use the bindings element. And then let's say, for example, we want to customize the binding for net TCP binding. So we'll specify the binding name as net TCP binding, I mean the binding type. And then we give the binding a name. Maybe let's say net TCP. And then here we specify the security mode. So what security mode do you, do you want? Do you want message or transport or transport with message credential or you don't want any security at all. So let's say for example when I choose transport as the security mode then we select transport element within uh, the security element and then here client credential type is what we can use to customize the authentication that we want to use with this security mode. So do you want to use vendors or do you want to use certificate or none? Okay. Similarly, if you set the security mode as message, then you use message element and then specify the client credential type. So with message, uh, you know, security mode, we have got, we have actually a lot more options than, you know, with transport mode. So here we can either use Windows or username authentication, certificate or issued tokens. We'll discuss all these in detail in a later video session. Okay. The point that we need to understand here is that to customize the authentication scheme for a given binding, we use client credential type. That's it for today. Thank you for listening. Have a great day.